From Launch Complex 39 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Shuttle Launch Control at T minus three hours, 22 seconds and counting. We're now entering the final six hours of the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-109, the fourth Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission. We're standing by now to go into a two-hour built-in hold in three, two, one, T minus three hours and holding. This is a planned two-hour built-in hold. And at this time, the closeout crew is now heading toward the launch pad in preparation for the astronauts' arrival. And the final inspection team is also entering the launch pad area so that they can begin their ice inspections. Our commander, Scott Altman. Mission specialist, Nancy Curry. Our payload commander, John Grunsfeld. And Rick Linehan, mission specialist, Rick Linehan. And after they have their light snack, they'll be going to the suit-up room. I'll have a brief check on the countdown status and the weather. Here's the mission STS-109 cake with the mission emblem. They'll be going out to the launch pad about 2.40 a.m. Commander Scott Altman. That's our pilot, Dwayne Carey, making his first flight on STS-109. Rick Linehan, mission specialist number three, making his third flight on STS-109. Mike Massimino, MS-5, making his first flight. John Grunsfeld, our payload commander, MS-1. Jim Newman, MS-4, his fourth flight on STS-109, also one of our EVA crew members. And here is Nancy Curry, our flight engineer making her fourth flight, also our RMS operator. This is shuttle launch control, T-minus two hours, 54 minutes, 42 seconds and counting. The STS-109 flight crew now leaving the suit-up room on the way to the elevator for the ride down to the ground floor to board the astronaut transfer van, the astrovan for the 20 minute ride out to launch pad 39A.
This is shuttle launch control, T minus two hours, 34 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. We see the astronauts on the pad surface now, having just gotten off the Astrovan and heading for the fixed service structure. They took a brief look uh, at the vehicle, walking over to the edge of the flame trench and looking up the stack. And uh, they'll now ride the elevator up to the 195 foot level. And here they are now arriving at the 195 foot level. They usually uh, enjoy the view from up there before boarding. It's uh, quite spectacular. They can see the entire complex 39 area and all the way down to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And now we see our Commander Scott Altman preparing to board Columbia by members of the closeout crew. They'll be helping uh, the astronauts with their helmets and the other equipment that uh, they need to don before entering the orbiter. And of course we have seven crew members to board. And uh, after that there will be the communications checks with each of them in their seats and then we'll close the orbiter access hatch at 4.48 a.m. is the nominal time for that this morning. But uh, that can be done all the way up to an hour later if necessary, if there's some kind of a, a, a problem in the countdown. Commander now on board. He'll be assisted into his seat by astronaut Mike Foreman, who's on board the orbiter to help the crew get seated and uh, do their final preparations before the hatch is closed. And, uh, and go ahead, sir. This is shuttle launch control at T minus two hours, 23 minutes, 20 seconds and counting. And we're now seeing mission specialist number five, Mike Massimino, making his first flight. He'll be doing two of the spacewalks on this mission. Crews getting a little cleaning of their shoes uh, before they go on board. The uh, crew can combat, they try to keep as, keep as clean as possible. Payload retention, payload select switch, position one. Mike Massimino will be sitting on the mid deck in the far right seat. OTC, OVCC. Go ahead. MS5 on board at this time. MS5, copy. And the uh, closeout crew on board uh, will also make sure that their suits are indeed ready for launch. They'll put the uh, light sticks uh, in their arms as uh, we see here the one uh, on Massimino's right arm. Mission specialist number two, Nancy Curry, who is the flight engineer and robotic arm operator on this mission now preparing to board. She'll be sitting up on the flight deck in the aft center seat. MS-2 yeah. is on board at this time and that is all crew members on board. Okay, copy that. She operated the robotic arm to place uh, Unity into position on the space station. And that was made at to Zaria in, on STS-88. Well, 
Columbia CDR launch director. Launch director CDR, go ahead, sir. Okay, Scott, it will be good to have uh, Columbia back in flight status. So we wish you good luck on this very important mission to the Hubble Space Telescope, and you all have fun up there. And uh, launch director Mike, uh, we really appreciate that. I just want to say thanks to the whole team that's gotten all of our Hubble equipment ready to go, and the whole team from basically from one side of the country to the other that's worked so hard to get Columbia ready to roar again. Hubble's up there ready for us, and we're ready to go to work. Thank you all. That's our pleasure, and you all have a great flight. The countdown clock will resume on my mark. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. The last auto sequence has been initiated. Ground launch sequence are now controlling. All functions between now and handoff to Columbia, we can control by this ground launch sequencer computer here in the firing room. Let's just go for orbiter access arm retract. Columbia OTC, good luck on your mission, allowing us to better glimpse our future by enhancing Hubble's view of the past. Orbiter test conductor Jeff Lawfer wishing the crew well. Gaseous oxygen vent hood now being retracted. Okay, visor's coming down, O2 coming on. To use a Navy turn, let's launch it. External tank now at flight pressure. T minus one minute. Solid rocket booster field joint heaters now being turned off. 20 seconds. Firing chain is on. 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia to broaden our view of the universe through the Hubble Space Telescope. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the Pioneer Shuttle headed for the Hubble Space Telescope. Roger roll, Columbia. Columbia into the roll, placing the shuttle in a heads-down, wings-level position for the eight-and-a-half-minute ride to orbit. Twenty-five seconds into the flight, Columbia's three liquid-fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Already two miles in altitude, one and a half miles downrange, leaving an incandescent trail behind it. Columbia headed for Hubble, Hubble almost directly over the Cape at this moment. Three engines now uh, throttling down, uh, soon to throttle back up to 104% of rated performance. The main engines, along with the three fuel cells and three hydraulic power units, all functioning normally. Standing by. Columbia, Houston, you are go at throttle up. Columbia County, still at throttle up. That throttle up call from Capcom Mark Polanski acknowledged by Commander Scott Altman aboard Columbia. Altman joined on the flight deck by pilot Dwayne Carey, flight engineer Nancy Curry, and mission specialist John Grunsfeld, Rick Lenahan, Jim Newman, and Mike Massimino seated down on the mid deck. Columbia tracking right down the pike, 15 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange, heading due east from the Kennedy Space Center for an altitude of 350 statute miles in pursuit of Hubble. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight, about 15 seconds prior to solid rocket booster separation. Standing by for SRB separation. Booster officer confirms a good SRB separation. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel. Columbia Houston, two engine Ben. Houston, we got 
Copy, two engine bend. That call from Capcom Mark Polanski indicates that if one engine should fail right now, Columbia could make a transoceanic abort to Ben Gurir, Morocco. However, as it climbs into dawn, Columbia right on the money, aiming uh, the shuttle for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Thank you very much, but the thanks and the congratulations and the adulation goes to all of you. Well done. Outstanding effort. Unbelievable. Thank you. We have uh, George, matter of fact, George Page, I think, would be exceptionally proud of the amazing accomplishment you all pulled off this morning. And uh, certainly his legacy and that of that all of you will continue to pass along will certainly stand in this great historic tradition. Well done. I have three dis very distinguished guests here with me this morning who uh, uh, have all been stunned by the amazing feat that you pull off in each and every time, but again, witnessed this morning. Uh, first and foremost uh, is uh, Admiral, Rear Admiral John Stufflebeam, who uh, you probably see on TV a fair amount. He's the guy that does the daily explanation of the, uh, the efforts in Afghanistan and all we're doing there during the course of the, the continuing efforts uh, uh, to deal with the terrorist attacks there. Uh, Dr. John Marburger, who is the, the President Bush's science advisor, is here to join us as well. And my good friend, Admiral Skip Bowman, who uh, is the current guardian of the Rickover legacy of the Navy nuclear program, is here to observe and realize that the parallels of what he does and what we do are exactly the same. And so in that regard, uh, I think all three gents uh, have had an opportunity here to see what an amazing job you all do each and every time. But for me, as my first launch, this was a truly special moment. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Scooter, what we've been looking at with that is that uh, it appears that uh, we have a possible restricted flow somewhere in uh, the system on Loop 1. And uh, right now, there are no impacts to the mission at all. However, we just want to give you a heads up. Uh, ECOM is taking a hard look and uh, will be monitoring the performance over the next day or so to come up with a, a good game plan and an understanding of exactly what's going to be affected, if anything. Okay, we copy that. Uh, let, us, let us know if there's anything we can do to help troubleshoot. We'll certainly do that, Scooter. This is Mission Control Houston, that uh, discussion between Capcom Mark Polanski here in Mission Control and Commander Scott Altman on board Columbia, having to do with a, uh, a message that was received on board the orbiter a short time ago uh, regarding uh, a somewhat uh, reduced flow of Freon through uh, one of two Freon loops uh, that exist in the uh, radiators on the payload bay doors of the orbiter. In this case, Freon loop number one, which is on the port or left side radiator, of uh, Columbia uh, has exhibited a slightly uh, reduced flow, no impact uh, to mission operations uh, at this point. Uh, the flight control team, particularly the environmental uh, systems officer here in mission control, will be uh, carefully watching uh, the operation of that Freon loop uh, during the course of the next uh, several days uh, to see what its characteristics are. Columbia, Houston, we see your happy faces on board and we're ready for the downlink. Okay, uh, we just wanted to say hello, uh, let you see our happy faces, and here comes the downlink. 